Good afternoon YouTube. Today I'm going to be using this silicone charcuterie board from Crafted Elements to make an epoxy charcuterie board with wine corks. Stay tuned to see how it's done. My first step is to head over to the bandsaw and to cut these pieces of burl maple into two to make them the proper thickness. Lucky for me I did this. I ended up having to make two boards because I made a mistake on the first one but I still think it turned out pretty good. Time to lay out the corks, bring them over the bandsaw, start cutting them in half. By cutting the corks in half it allows me to better control the thickness of the board. I don't want it too thick because it will be too much of a beast to try to handle. Crafted Elements recommends using a non silicone based mold release before every epoxy pour. Not only does this make the piece easier to remove, but it also extends the life of your mold. After applying the mold release I bring the mold inside to set it up for the pour. I place the wood pieces where I want them and then I weigh them down with some weights to make sure that they don't float in the epoxy. I'm mixing up some super clear liquid glass. This epoxy requires a 2 to 1 ratio. And then you want to stir vigorously until the epoxy is clear again, remembering to scrape all the sides and the bottom to make sure the two parts are mixed completely. Next I'm going to add the pigment from eye candy. This blue is going to look great. I'm going to stir it in thoroughly, ensuring that all the pigment is mixed and there are no clumps of powder left. Now it's time to pour. I'm going to pour a thin enough layer to ensure that the corks are not exposed over the top of the wood. I always keep this little 6 inch mold from Crafted Elements on hand just in case I have any extra. I let the epoxy sit and set up for a couple of hours and then I start to stir in some swirls. This takes a little bit of practice to get the timing right. You need the epoxy to be thick enough that the swirls stay but thin enough that you can stir it and the epoxy will level itself out again. You can see that this creates a lot of bubbles in the surface so out comes the torch to make it a glass finish. I let the epoxy sit for a couple more hours to stiffen up, but it is still sticky enough that when I put these corks on, they will stick to the surface and won't float when I go to pour in the next layer. Next is a thin layer of clear to fill on all the cracks and crevices in the corks, and then I'm going to fill in a flood coat to top it off and make sure everything is underneath epoxy. You can see here, everything is submerged. Removing epoxy projects from crafted element silicone molds are simple. With the non-silicone based mold release, all you have to do is break the seal from the edges and the boards slide right out. The board will be ready to go immediately for your next project. And now it's time for flattening. And this is why I like to submerge everything in epoxy because I can use my drum sander to take off the epoxy high spots get a nice flat finish without any danger of hitting the corks or removing too much of the wood. I'm going to sand it pretty much flat with 80 grit and get it ready to take over to the router table. Before adding a round over I'm just going to take a little bit of epoxy off the both edges. This will ensure we have clean sides for the round over bit to follow. At the router table I'm going to start with shallow passes. I'm going to build up the contour to what I'm looking for. Then I'll shape the final profile with my random orbital sander to get nice rounded edges to really follow the lines. I have a soft pad installed on my random orbital sander. This allows me to follow the contour of the roundover and make sure that I'm not getting any flat spots when I'm trying to build in that contour and finish this epoxy board off. Once sanded to 220 grit, I like to vacuum it off and then wipe it down with some water and a cloth. This removes all the epoxy dust and gets it ready for my seal coat using tabletop epoxy. I have this HDPE coffee table mold from Crafted Elements that I like to use when I'm doing flood coats on boards. I spray it down with this non-silicone based mold release. This mold makes it really nice for doing flood coats on boards. All the epoxy is contained within the mold and it makes it real easy for cleanup. You'll see this later. It's time for the first tabletop epoxy pour. I'm mixing up some super clear tabletop epoxy 
This is a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm pouring it on thinly for a seal coat. This is going to seal any cracks, crevices, and any exposed wood. And then I'll go back and sand it down smooth and get it ready for the flood coat later. By applying a seal coat, you limit the amount of bubbles that are going to come through. You also give a nice smooth surface. Now you might think that surface looks pretty good. But you can see some minor imperfections. And in this bare wood, you can see that the epoxy is soaked in, so there's no epoxy left. We're going to scuff up these boards with 340 grit. Now you can see where the imperfections in the seal coat stand out. Don't worry, once the boards are scuffed up, we're going to go back and clean them with a vacuum and some water. Once they're dry, we're going to apply a flood coat, the final coat. This should be glass smooth. Back to my pouring station for the flood coat. I'm going to pour an extra thick layer of epoxy, ensuring that it coats all the edges, sides, and top. The nice thing about this tabletop epoxy is it is self-leveling. All I have to do is make sure it covers the entire top and all of the sides. After letting the epoxy set up for a little bit, I'm going to run a torch over to pop any of the surface bubbles. Then I'm just going to let it rest for about two days and make sure it's fully cured. Here's why I like using Crafted Elements HDPE coffee table mold. All of the overflow just pops right out and clean up as a breeze. Now is some dirty work. I'm going to sand all of the drips off the bottom side of these charcuterie boards. Take 80 grit. Try to get as many of the drips down as flat and flush as possible. And I start working my way with the sander all the way up to 340 grit and call it good. Once done with the 340 grit, I vacuum off all the excess dust and then wipe it down with water and get ready to apply finish to the back. I'm going to apply a nice thick coat of walrus oil furniture finish to the back side of these boards. I let the finish set up overnight and then I wipe off the excess. This leaves a nice matte finish on the back side of the board and a nice shiny epoxy cover on the front side. And there you have it folks. Charcuterie boards made with crafted elements, silicone molds, and an HDPE tabletop epoxy mold. If you're wondering where this nice orange one came from, well that was my first project. That I messed up the corks. And I was able to save it. I think it turned out pretty awesome. I'd like to thank crafted elements for letting me represent their brand. And I look forward to creating more projects in the future.